Skydiving. Can you believe it? Skydiving. Ask me if I'll go skydiving. Yeah, let me think about this for a second. Let me leave my comfortable home where I have food and a toilet and furniture and I could sit to jump out of a jump out of a plane. Well, because I got the parachute, I shouldn't be concerned. There's no way. Nah, you you would you, you'd have to be insane. I, I would never I would never do it. You know, when I travel, you're lucky you're lucky I get on an airplane. And even when it's landing at an appropriate destination, you think I'm going to get on to jump off? Steve Weiner here with GetRubix.com, and today we're going to finally get to look at the Intune Device Migration Version 7 tool in action. A trained instructor? How can you be trained in jumping out of a plane? See, that doesn't make sense to me. Get Rubix, solving for the modern workplace. All right, so the other day I showed you basically the overall design changes to the tool. What we're gonna look at today is we're gonna kind of do what we always do. We're gonna look at the solution end first. So we're gonna look at the user experience. Um, reminder, on Monday the 5th, I could check the calendar. Is that the 5th? Yeah, so on Monday the 5th, it's gonna be available uh, on GitHub, a beta version. Uh, if you wanna test the tool out for yourself, basically you're gonna head over to our Discord, uh, server. The link's always b below, down, and uh, basically going to reach out directly. Maybe Lisa will set something up where you can ask for uh, however we're doing it. That's where you're going to have to go. But I'm going to show you the user experience, and this is specifically for uh, tenant to tenant uh, device migration from a source Intune tenant to another Intune tenant, cloud join in both scenarios. So let me show you the setup. Okay, so first let's take a look at the device itself. So if I go to settings, SC837468 is the name. So I built a new source tenant and here's my device and we can look at it. It's up here managed and in tune by Han Solo at stevecapacity.com. And uh, what do we got here? We have, yeah, fully managed. It is cloud joined so it's also autopilot registered so if i look at the serial number let's copy the serial number and i go look in windows enrollments devices there it is so the devices here uh has an autopilot profile sign has an associated entry device id and you know we're all good to go here so if we look at accounts access work school we can see that it's managed uh, Han Solo at stevecapacity.com managed by Intune it's syncing in right we're all good to go there and let's take a look at our files I don't have too much stuff but if I go to documents I did set up some things so my documents.txt important things it's another folder and if we look here we're gonna see under users there's Han Solo right so that's my folder all right so let's go ahead and proceed with the process now in order for device migration to work, you would have had to already move the user identities, right? That's always a, a prerequisite. So in our scenario, I've acquired the Steve Capacity tenant. So I've, you know, Han Solo Steve Capacity, I've made a Han Solo at rubixdev.com. So the UPNs are matching, it's just a completely different domain. So that's kind of the prereq work that I've done here. And we can assume I've also moved the email, share, you know, SharePoint, OneDrive stuff. I don't do identity migration, but obviously you know that that comes along with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the company portal where I've made my migration app available. There it is, V7. We click install here. Okay, and it's off and running. Um, don't worry about the command prompt. That's going to go away once we get into beta. That's pretty much it. From the end user perspective, we just click install and uh, we are good to go. So we're gonna wait on that reboot next. All right, so that was about 20 seconds. It, it basically goes about 30 seconds, the reboot. Um, just waiting for Hyper-V to be Hyper-V. Okay, so as soon as the device tries to come back, we're gonna see the device migration in progress your PC is being migrated to the rubixdev.com tenant and will automatically reboot in 30 seconds. Please do not power off. So here, all you have to do is instruct your end users to just sit tight, right? Um, they can click okay if they want, but 
uh, they won't be able to log in because it's not possible here. And you can see they can see migration in progress. Um, so yeah, really can't do anything here um, until the reboot is finished. So we'll call this like halfway uh, reboot. And that's it. So once the process is complete, the user is going to be told what to do. Welcome to rubixdev.com. Please log in with your new email address. And that's it for the end user. That took a few minutes. Let's log in. All right. So now we're going to use Han Solo at rubixdev.com. Let's look at this. So if we take a look at the account, Han Solo at rubixdev.com. So if I go to work or school now, you're going to see Rubix Dev. No Steve capacity. I don't want Teams right now. Stop Teams. Okay, so we're all set there. But what about the user data, right? And this is usually a big issue. If I go to this PC, Users, well, it's still just Han Solo. And if you look at my documents, my stuff is still here, right? Even though we're managed by the RubixDev.com. So now let's go take a look at a few other things. Okay, so I'm still here in the source tenant. Uh, let's go back and let's refresh this. Notice the device is gone. Um, it's not here anymore. We migrated it. Okay, so now if I go back to enrollment, let's go find the autopilot object. That's gone as well. There is no 3729. Let's head over to the destination tenant. So that's it. The user experience is done. The device has left the source tenant. We're going to take a look at the destination tenant, but I want to stress here that that's it for the user experience. The user is going to continue to work. They're going to SSO into their applications and they're just part of the new tenant now. And it's the same user profile. We just changed the owner of it. So it's the new UPN owner as opposed to the old one. So just for example, I'm going to turn on OneDrive and hit sign in and it's automatically going to SSO me into um, OneDrive because I'm part of the rubixdev.com tenant now. There we go. See, I didn't have to sign in. Um, it's just going to continue doing that, and we're going to be uh, we're going to be good to go. So the user can immediately start working with their new uh, credentials on the same PC with the same files. So there's no downtime for them. All right, and one more thing, I'm just going to head over to the company portal. Because remember before we only had the migration app, but now because we're in Rubik's Dev, you can see my normal Rubik's Dev app catalog that's now available to this user to install. All right, so here in the destination tenant, I'm going to go to Windows and I'm going to look up the device 3729. And here it is. So it just got here. It's not evaluated yet, but we can see immediately the primary user is Han Solo. There is no enrolled by, it was enrolled by a provisioning package. So the enrolled by is going to stay empty. It won't matter. Han Solo is the primary user. So if we take a look at the name of the device, we're also going to head over to Entra. And we're going to find the device here as well. Okay, there we go. So Rubik's Dev, and we can see it is already been registered in uh, autopilot. Now it does take time for the Entra object and the Intune object to marry up. Probably takes about 15 minutes. Again, that's really not a big deal. The end user doesn't know anything. Uh, let's go look in autopilot. Enrollment, devices, and it's right here. We're just waiting for everything to kind of fall into place there and marry back up. But we're up and running. We have already, if we go back to the device, we're going to see some uh, configuration applications pushed to it. It's going to get everything else any device in the Rubix Dev tenant would get because it's now part of that. So if we go to device configuration, we're going to see a bunch of policy come down. If we go to manage apps, we're going to see some available installed, right? Everything is, is essentially coming down to the device. If you've been following the device migration solution from the beginning, and it's been a year now since I've been formally publishing this, putting it on GitHub, doing the videos on it. So, you know, it took a, it took a year for that version to really come to fruition. And thanks to everyone who's been trying it, because without, you know, the feedback and, and people using it in different scenarios, never really would have, uh, you know, 
uh, thought to, you know, fix certain things or include things. But anyway, at, if you're familiar with it, you know, there was like a three or four. It was actually four reboots the last time. And this time we're down to, I'll say, one and a half. Um, but it was very smooth. You could see for the end user and on the back end, you're just waiting for things to kind of fall into place. Um, there's two other scenarios we're eventually going to walk through. Um, one is going from hybrid to cloud join. That'll be the next one we do. And the other will be going from co-managed or SCCM managed to Intune. Uh, hop in the discord if you're not there already, because we're going to open the, uh, sign up for beta access thing, probably Thursday or Friday, and we'll be seeing you.